the ones I like were in the middle of the action. Now, granted, Maria Tassiopoulos from Islington Pizza, there's not a lot of action at this given second because it's that time of day where it's not super busy, but it's great always to be in Islington Pizza. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I love the excitement on people's face when I sit across from them and they're holding the <laughs> microphone. They're like, oh my God, I'm on a podcast. This is great. But it's fun. It's been fun to get to know you. It's been fun to get to learn more about Islington Pizza, the history, 27 years of yep. being here. Think about it. 27. You don't look 27. Uh, what do I look, 67? <laughs> Not at all, but uh, first things first, place looks great. Thank when you. I was here you. previously interviewing you for the business profile in Westwood Living, you were doing the paint. It looks fantastic. It does. It looks nice. It looks brighter. It looks bigger. It was a long time coming. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So what I enjoyed, there were a couple of quotes that I really liked when we first talked. And the first one, which I led the story with, was, it's mayhem, but it's good. It runs smoothly. Yep. Tell me what it's like here on a busy night because there are so many people who know each other so well. Right. Um, it's People just know where to move, when to duck, when to move by, when to jump in and grab the phone, when to jump in and wrap a sub. It just, it, it practically runs itself on a good night. So when we spoke earlier, it must have been October when we spoke, you said, and I didn't know this, and a lot of people probably don't know this. I mean, it's your life, but not everybody knows the details. It's been 27 years since you've been here. But the coffee grinder was yeah. in your family, yeah. right? So take people who've been here a long time back in time to when the coffee grinder was the main thing in your family's so life. So the coffee grinder was my dad, my mom, my brother Evan, and me, and just a couple of employees here and there. Um, we did pizzas, a lot of the things we do new sandwiches, but we had breakfast sandwiches too. We opened at 6 a.m. So it was 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., six days a week, um, closed on Sundays. All right, well, that might have led to some of the burnout because you did yeah, admit did. there was a yeah. period of time where you're like, okay, I'm out, Yeah. which is natural. I get it. But you were sucked back in. Yep. And it was really your dad, right? Yep. Wasn't it your dad who got this going? Tell me about how dad really yeah, got so this going. Yeah, so dad, um, so my brother Evan and I, we wanted out of the coffee grinder. We were just done. We, we both went to college. We wanted to go work in an office somewhere. Um, and I actually ended up working for one of my cousin's pizza places for almost that whole year. And then my brother was working, I think, various jobs as well and then we just realized you know that we're not really going to be able to find jobs and what we went to school for it was kind of a weird market back then um, I majored in accounting but I didn't really like accounting mm -hmm. you like and people I do I like people I like I'm a, I can't even imagine myself being an accountant right now so probably I think we closed in October the coffee grinder and then the following December we reop we reopened this my dad um it used to be a paint store and the landlord alfred magaletta the the dad not the son um was had it up for lease and my dad talked to him and they were both like older and old-fashioned he that guy was italian my dad's greek and they came up with a good deal and my dad asked my brother and me would you like to start over and we were like yeah let's do it all right there so you go it worked it's out a, nice. you open up right after christmas in the 1995. day after christmas 1995. <sighs> I mean, look at what's happened around you. I know. You couldn't possibly have imagined that what has happened around you would happen over I the know. course of those almost three decades. I know. I know. It's it's it looks great. It's like a little village now. It's really nice. That was the purpose, you know. The, yeah. Uh, Giorgio's done a great job. Oh, he's, he's now done the a boss. fabulous job. Everything looks very tasteful, very awesome. So we talk about you being a people person, but what do you like specifically about this? Lo not location, but like your your spot, it's your thing. You know, you know everybody when they walk in. They're like Maria. Yeah, like everybody, <laughs> everybody that lives probably within a at least a one mile radius comes in here regularly. Um, people, I don't. I mean, honestly, a lot of my lunchtime customers, I know their names. I've known them for years. I don't know where all of them work, but I know that this is their this is their lunch spot. It's their spot. And, yeah, and some some of the guys that co uh, customers that come in here. They are so regular that some of the guys will start making their food before they even have to come up and order. <laughs> they see him coming yeah. up. Well, I will say this. You're on speed dial at my mom's house. Shout out to mom. <laughs> because, you know, we moved my parents up here in 2019. And, yep. you know, it's hard. I mean, they had a favorite pizza back home. And, you know, we, we went around and everybody's got their favorites. Yeah. And mom said, wait, well, what's this place? And, and she had a pizza pie from here. Yep. And it is a Friday night regular. Yep. I mean, it is Rita Leiden, Scott Islington Re Pizza. Yep, Rita. <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know. Yep. You Highland know the, Glen. Yep. You know the address. And yep. It, it is. Uh, so you give her a little piece of home. And I think Good. that's what people always enjoy. You know, they like the fact that 
there's comfort in knowing what you know. And you talked about the fact that you, you won't change your recipes. No, I don't see a re- reason to. What's your favorite? Whether it be to make or to push on people like, hey, you should really try this because it's, it's new or it's different or it's signature. So I know I've talked before about that sweet Asian chili sauce that we put on the chicken fingers, which is out of this world amazing. But probably one of my favorite things to eat from here is the chicken cutlet. Um, specifically when it's chicken parmesan style. Mm. But I mean, we have fresh chicken, we pound it, we bread it, we fry it. It's just the best thing. It's delicious. It is delicious. And our pizza, of course. I can attest to that. <laughs> I did have a steak and cheese right before this conversation. It's the first time I'd had one. How here. was it? Oh, it was great. Yeah. I we don't put a lot on a it. a ton of steak and cheese. Oh, you, do, I don't you don't do even need onions. to put anything on no, it. No, it was great. I just had the steak, I had the cheese, I had the bread. Yeah. Know, trying to minimize That's the extra all you stuff. Need. One of the things that also made me laugh when we talked is that you said you've spent so much time in Westwood, but you've never lived here, right? No. Nope. Don't you? You've lived in Denham. I grew up in Denham. Walpole, Norwood. And then I've, I've lived in Norwood for like 25 years. <laughs> yep. But pizza's kind of in the family still, though. Oh, yeah. Evan's still doing yep, his Evan thing. Evan still he has doing? Pizza Doros in East Dedham. Uh, my husband, Rob, owns Crisp in Walpole and in Canton. Um, my cousin, Maria, owns a Dedham House of Pizza. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, do you ever have like a family competition? Like, I think it's a friendly competition. I think we're all far enough away from each other where we all have our own customers. But I'm sure we share a lot of customers. But that's fine. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about like at a family party. Oh. You're like, Okay. Yeah, with Let's my see who does my this brother best. and I have a friendly competition. Do you? Yeah, we'll go over our, our you know our sales for Friday night or <laughs> you know a holiday Monday. And is it a similar recipe though, or do you have little secrets that you even keep from your family? No, I don't keep any secrets. I should. <laughs> I should. <laughs> what do you see as the future? You know, the, you you have a niche. You've got a place that you're very comfortable with. Where do you? I mean, is there room for growth? How do you grow? How's the business changed over the years? You know last what? A lot years? of people have asked me if I want to add a second location. I mm. just, I just don't have it in me. I'm not that type of person that can have so many things going on. And you know, honestly, I don't want to, my life's focus to be just work, 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 work. Mm-hmm. I'm perfectly content just having my Islington pizza um, until I just can't do it anymore. So. I don't. I can't give you a specific number of years. <laughs> well, it's 27 that you're up to now. Think about that. Yeah. 27 years in business. I don't know if I'll make it to 37, but okay, little peek somewhere in the into 30s. the window. Somewhere yeah, into somewhere the, in the 30s. 30s. That's good. Uh, d- delivery has changed because you know a lot of times it's just been by phone. Right. But that's now, I would imagine, significantly changed because I would guess people are ordering a lot online. Can people order online? Uh, you know what? We actually do not have. You don't do the as online of yet, thing yet? Online ordering. We that's do how have, the business we is do grow. Have, we do have Grubhub and DoorDash, okay. which bring us a little extra business. Okay. Um, but I mean, we do a lot of deliveries a day, like sometimes 40, 50, 60. The phone rings off the so, hook. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. To, I'm glad I got you sitting down at this table yeah. for 10 minutes. Yeah. Because it's tough to get anybody who works here focused because immediately the phone rings and yep. they got to take a new order. Exactly. Can I'll you- be honest with you. I actually forgot you were sitting here for a few minutes. And then when I saw my son, Michael, sitting down, I was like, oh, wait, I have to grab him to help I gotta me. i got to go. Well, as we wrap it up, I do want to just say this. Uh, for what I do to work with the publication, with building the business network and everything else, I need support from people like you, from businesses like you. And I can't thank you enough. I mean, you're a staple and you've been here such a long time and it's easy for someone like you to say like, well, I don't need to advertise. And that's where I think someone like you understood, you know, the investment back in the community. I have had so many customers come in and tell me that they saw the article, that they saw the little, um, um, there was a little thing on, you know, the little Facebook, Instagram things Mm -hmm. that scroll by all the time. We have a lot of people coming in here and mentioning it, so... I well, think that's a lot good. of people read your magazine. Good. That's good <laughs> stuff. And I thank you very much for your support. So how can people learn more about you? You got a website you want to pimp here? Um, it's just Islington-Pizza.com. It's just our menu. It's nothing. You know, I, I need to step up to the the times. I'm not one of those um, all over Facebook, all over Instagram people with Islington Pizza. I know that, you know, at this day and age, you should be. And it will probably help me grow business. I'm just, I think I'm just more laid back and... Good. You got a good thing going, so keep it going, and I appreciate it very much. For all of those those of you listening, don't forget you can go to Islington-Pizza.com to learn more about Maria and her great business here on Washington Street and also Westwood-Living.com. And we will be back with more. If you've got good ideas of people I should talk to for this podcast, bring them on, and we will get them on the air, and you can hear their stories. But for now, we wrap it up from Islington Pizza in Westwood on the Westwood Living Podcast. (laughs) 